Picture it. You are a Silent Hill fan in 2022. Maybe you don't want to imagine that, actually, as you would have been subject to abuse from Konami for the better part of two decades. It's no secret that fans of Silent Hill have been starving. The beloved franchise was left to gather dust years ago, since, well... Stop! Leave her alone! Leave us both to hell! So, on a more positive note, imagine how good it must have felt seeing this. In October of that very year, Silent Hill was back. A remake of the most popular entry in the franchise, following the wildly successful footsteps of Resident Evil? Check. A new entry from two very promising small studios? Check. A film adaptation of Silent Hill 2 from the director of the original 2006 movie, who seems to truly be a fan of the series. Check. Another new entry being written by one of the most talented light novelists on the planet. Check. An interactive streaming experience where the audience makes decisions in real time? Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Point being, that Silent Hill was returning with a bang, clearly trying to make a statement that this can still be one of the greatest horror franchises around. It was exciting, especially with the news that all of it would be kicked off with the Silent Hill 2 remake, and sure it's coming from Bloober Team, who does not have the greatest reputation, still, this is a story that's already been written for them. Even if the game comes out just being okay, it'll still be a modern take on one of the most loved, survival horror games to have ever been released. Just the idea of it alone is at least interesting. Fast forward about six months and sure, Konami has been radio silent since the transmission, but that must mean they're hard at work. And info has just come out that a new trailer is on the way, this is it. We could finally be getting some gameplay of the remake, we could see Maria, Angela, Eddie, maybe a sneak peek at combat. The time comes, the trailer finally releases, and... <sighs> so much for kicking things off with a bang. Who asked for this? Seriously. Okay, the trailer looks decently cool, if it was called anything other than Silent Hill. So why? Why would they choose this to kick off the series' big revival? Silent Hill is a series of games known for having pushed the genre of survival horror in its own unique ways. I could go on for hours talking about what made Silent Hill so special, and maybe I will someday. But instead, I'm going to keep it short and say that this, this is definitely not what made Silent Hill special. It's not even a game. And judging from a large portion of the community reaction to the reveal of Ascension, a lot of people aren't even aware of that fact. If you were to go back and watch the transmission from last October and ask yourself what would be the absolute least interesting way to kick off a Silent Hill revival, you would probably say it's this. Exactly this. Perhaps the idea is to generate hype around the IP before releasing the big boys on us, and to be fair, that isn't such a horrible idea. However, it turns into a pretty horrible idea when the franchise you decide to do it with is the same one you've left dead in the water for years, with a passionate fanbase that has felt nothing if not slighted over that time. Instead, by venturing this route, you have invited people to clown on you, meme on you, and most detrimentally, dismiss you. But enough with the decision to launch the new era of Silent Hill with Ascension. It's Yes, it's horribly stupid, but beyond that, what even is this? One look at the trailer and anyone even remotely familiar with the franchise would be able to tell that this does not feel like Silent Hill. There seems to be some kind of cultish activity, while well, there was a cult in Silent Hill, so slap the name on it. Visually disturbing monsters? Yep, slap Silent Hill on that bad boy. Now I will, for just a moment, be fair to Ascension and say that 
The atmosphere and general tone being given off in some of the screenshots, they do look pretty cool. Unfortunately though, I'm about to go straight back to ripping it apart. Because if I see this word one more time, I think I might go crazy. Silent Hill 2 is my favorite game in the series, and one of my favorite games of all time. It's about one man, James Sunderland coming to terms with his own trauma and guilt. A man who was put into a horrible situation made a horrible choice. In my opinion, the game is an absolute masterclass in storytelling, atmosphere, creature and character design. There's very little that Silent Hill 2 gets wrong. So, why might you ask am I so averse to the word trauma when speaking on Ascension? And that's a great question that I'll do my best to answer as simply as possible, because I've heard it about 68 times in regards to this particular project. Individual trauma and unresolved issues impacted by this trauma. If I have unresolved trauma, psychological trauma, these are people who've been through trauma, push them deeper into their trauma human experience of trauma, lost in the fog of our own trauma. And don't take this the wrong way, I'm not one of those people who subscribe to the belief that Silent Hill has always been about the occult, and the second game was just a quick detour for the franchise. I think Silent Hill can be whatever you want it to be. What separates Silent Hill 2 from something like Ascension, as well as other western produced games in the franchise, is one word. Subtlety. When you meet James in the bathroom, you don't know what he's done. When you meet Angela in the graveyard, Eddie in the apartments, you don't know what he's done. It is only through progression, little hints, and excellent storytelling do you learn hours into trying to figure out just what the hell is happening, what James has done. And then it all makes sense. Why Pyramid Head is after you. Maria's existence, what Silent Hill is presenting itself as to James. Subtlety is what makes Silent Hill 2 work. Now, imagine this game presenting its story in a similar way to what we've seen from Ascension. Imagine James running into Angela at the graveyard, where he tells her that he needs to go to Silent Hill despite the danger because someone he loves might be there. Let's imagine that Instead of this scene playing out the way that it did, James tells Angela that he's got to go to Silent Hill because he needs to face his trauma and come to terms with what he's done. Have you imagined it? Are you feeling sick? I wouldn't blame you. An interaction like this would have destroyed everything that made Silent Hill 2's story so exceptional. The mystery is gone. We don't have time to become acquainted with our main character before finding out that he's done something terrible. The moral struggle you feel upon learning of his actions is gone, because you didn't get to feel for James before learning that he did something bad. Silent Hill can focus on trauma and guilt as long as it's handled well, I would probably love every minute of it. However, from one trailer and some input from developers, we know that Ascension is about troubled people who have done bad things and are now being punished for it. What took Silent Hill 2 hours of gameplay to communicate to its audience. Ascension has told us in about two minutes. Now, despite all my quarrels, I am going to take part in Ascension because it is Silent Hill and I want to support my favorite gaming franchise. I just kind of wanted to vent on this one a little bit. Anyway, that's it. Let me know your thoughts on Ascension and Silent Hill as a whole, what you're excited for the most. I hope we get some more positive news soon because uh, I don't really want to watch this franchise go down in flames again and go away for several years i love it way too much for that anyway hope you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe it would make me very happy and yeah i hope to see you again soon